time as we go to our Lord in our prayers, I want to, I, I did this in the other two services and I've been debating because I know we're running a little long here, but our world's a, in a really uh, crazy place right now. And I would be amiss to just negate the opportunity to say a little something about that as we go to our Lord in prayer. Um, coronavirus and now riots and, and anger and racism and all sorts of things has sparked so much response in good ways, bad ways, and in every way you can imagine. And I've been thinking long and hard over the weekend, what does the church do during a time like this? What does the church say during a time like this? Um, on Facebook, it seems like everybody's got something to say. About 90% of it, I think, is bad <laughs> and not helpful. In fact, hurtful. and makes the matters even worse. I was like, well, how, Eric, are you going to be so arrogant to get up there and say something? You might make matters worse. I have opinions. They're not worth a hoot, but I have them. Um, Y'all don't want to hear them. I'm not going to tell you them. <laughs> um, so what do we do? I do think more now than ever before, the church has to respond. How do we respond? That's when I think it is so helpful to put Facebook down and read the scriptures. Quit listening to people out there and listen to our Lord up there. In a time that is confusing and difficult and hard, simply rely on the truths that we know so well. Matthew 5, um, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes and all that, Matthew 5 through 8, he gives so much instruction, but he gives no details as to how to apply those instructions to each and every situation of life. My wife hates what-if questions from, little, from her students, right? Well, what if a snowball comes from heaven and I don't know. But y you get what I'm saying, because and, and, life's not easy to apply God's truth. But it's good to remind ourselves what that truth is. So I wrote down six truths that I think we need to be reminded of during this time. And as the church, I think it's something, it's a time for us. If we're going to open our mouths, we need to remind ourselves of these truths first. Truth one, God loves all people. Matthew 28, 19 says, go and make disciples of? That means everyone everyone truth number two God seeks justice he says in Isaiah 117 learn to do good seek justice correct oppression we need to remind ourselves of that that's part of who we are we seek justice correct oppression truth number three God wants us to speak for those whose voice is not heard Proverbs 31, 9, uh, 31, 8 and 9 says, Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. That's one of the reasons why the church is vocal when, on issues like pro-life and other issues, because we feel like it's somebody needs to give voice to those who have no voice. If there's a voice that's being oppressed, we need to, as the church, listen. Even if you don't agree with it, Listen. If we are not listening to those who are hurting, then we are not ready or prepared to speak God's word and his love into their lives. We need an ear. Truth number four, I thought about the fourth commandment and first starting with Romans 13, 1 to 2. It says, be subject to your governing authorities because there is no authority except for God. If you resist the uh, governing authority, then therefore you are resisting God himself, it says. We need to be respectful of our governing authorities. I think about our catechism, so confirmation students, you all should know this, right? The fourth commandment is, that's the first one every kid always learns. Fourth commandment is, honor your father and your mother, right? And, and it says, as Luther says, we should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities. That would include all authorities, police officers, mayors, governors, president, all our governing authorities. But honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. The fifth truth I thought of is, again, from the Catechism, you shall not murder. In Matthew 5, again, it says, as it's going through the Beatitudes or in the Sermon on the Mount, he says, it said, you've heard it say you shall not murder but, I, murder, but I tell you, if you have anger in your heart against your brother, you have already committed murder against them. 
need to be careful with our anger. Luther says, we should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body. There's always a, what I call in confirmation, the comma, but, right? Because there's always a comma, but, and then it explains what we are supposed to do, but help and support our neighbor in every physical need. Then you may ask, well, who is our neighbor? Well, that question is actually conveniently written down for us. Who is our neighbor? From the moment of conception, every person whom God has created is our neighbor and especially anyone in need of our help or assistance is our neighbor. I thought about another truth. Truth number six is James 1, 19. As God calls us to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. My friends in Christ, there are more truths out there beyond these six. These are the ones that came to my heart and mind as I thought, well, what do I say? You don't want to hear words of Eric Heiner. We need to hear what God's word says to us during this time. And I do believe this more than any other, that we as a church, now when I say that, I don't mean a statement from Hope Lutheran Church or from our synodical office or anything like that. I mean individually, each and every one of us as Christians need to make sure, because guess what? The world is looking for hope. They're looking for answers. They're looking for understanding. And they're looking to us. And how we respond is very important. It's very important. So may we respond with the truth of God's love and his grace. May we respond with the knowledge and understanding of our Bible and his word for the world around us. And may we always, always be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger.